First, the headlines. Unidentified people hurled grenade at the residence of Fox President at Komba last night. No one injured. Protests intensify over arrest of three UNLF P cadres. Torch rally taken out in Imphal. Miscreants ransack ITLF office in Churachampur district, destroys documents and computers. Putin wins Russia election in la landslide victory. And curfew relaxing in far east, west and Tobal district till 10 p.m. For Kakching district till 8 p.m. In Bishnupur district, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. Good afternoon, you're watching Elite TV English News. I'm your host Diparani, here to give you the exact news in detail. Miscreants hurled a grenade at the residence of T.H. Manihar, President of Federation of Civil Society Organizations, Fox last night at Kongba Khetrilekai, Jekon, Imphal East. The incident took place around 9 p.m. yesterday. According to reports culled from the spot, some miscreants earlier asked the residents of Manihar to some locality. Luckily, the grenade was not blasted and no one was injured. Speaking to media persons, Manihar condemned the act in the strongest term. He further said he was dedicated his life for the betterment of the society and such an attack proves there are people who want to keep the society backwards. He has been helping the others since the cookie militants attacked the Meite community since May 3, 2023. He appealed to all not to create unnecessary ruckus amid the crisis and also called upon the people to root out such people. ควิกิควิกิเซติเมนต์ไอ้ที่ควิกิอิโมชั่นเลยนะนะบ่ควิกิเลบักซิกิอินเตอร์เรสถ้าบ่ตรงนั้นนะบ่กันนะตกจบน
Pagi mayum da pung mapanum tarok pa doy da hand grenade amal lang zalam de hari ba hand grenade asi pin sa laga lang zalam matung da hosu pao ba po kaidri adu po lang zalam ni mayum masina koy trading zam mani har fox ki presley mayum masina estelay de duga lang zalam masina koy masiki dayak asi la laga si gi so maksi da gi lang zalam koy dunay hosu jik sumang da bo masipo kaidri na ta adu na lady adu po makata ba hosu bo masi kalam kanda po kaidri kani amadi asumay na kang bangam da panina police na hosu mapu masi sil tarok a sumang da bo masi ta adu na lady adu po ngasai nung pung mapan na doay da po kaidri ba langsalak ni ba bom asi hoji pung taraga makai tarak lawa fawda hoji fawda bom squad lak tri masi gita makta akho ki laikai ki maira pae bae sing ama di fox ki president mas hamak na su kitang nungay tawa fungdo le hai ba di ngasai pung mapan na doay da langsalak ki ba bom ama bo hoji hoji fawda pung tara makai tara ba fawda hoji bom squad lak tawa bae bae si kitang nungay tawa po ama di lam dam asi ki hoji hoji lai di ba si na hoji laikai ki maira pae bae ama di laikai ki miyo sing lak tuna bom asi langsalam ba asi da akho ki Lak liba ni cerita cerita pihak macam ni, macam ni lagi liba miam sing. Si na fong dorok pergi matung ina kari kita makta kanana kari kita makta jumlah kita bom langsir liba no langsir bat tara basu nungtin matam dah koi waris handa raga jana opor asida koi ki kanana kari kita makta si kun lebat bom langsir bagi thong asis. Tatal liba no hai bina cing ba pen dapat kelau kaya masu macam ni fong dorok ni makata na macam ni aku polising nadi bom masih Pokai dana bahasa open jauh dana bahasa section terang ke aman untuk lokal ni. Aduh makar tabah jadi polis ke akhir berforce lak tu na bom squad lak tu na aku ini lady bom bom masih aku lakat kena bahasa aku terang susu tau leh. Habis kita power di lady aduh bo polis bom squad sing jadi bo lak terbina kerong kandang lak ni habis jadi pokai nanti mengam diri hilang masih kita tang dah video jurnalis sing hengam bola ni nampak dengar berisik es nampak ilik news komba. Protests in Manipur continue to gain momentum as res residents express their strong opposition to the National Investigation Agency's recent arrest of three Pambay-led UNLF cadres. Last night witnessed a significant display of dissent with approximately 300 Maira Paibis leading a torch rally from Kwakaitil to Kaishampa Junction in Imphal. The primary demand was the immediate release of the detained UNLFP members, a call that echoed loudly throughout the gathering. Torch rallies were conducted at Mayai Lambi, also demanding immediate release of the three cadres of UNLFP who had been arrested by the NIA on March 13 from Kwakaitil area. About 5,000 Mayapai bees of Mayai Yumpam Kumankangle Apunba Itinpam, Tongkong Lakshmi Bazaar, and Mayang Imphal took part at the rally. The rally started from Wangoi and ended at Mayang Imphal Bazaar. The Mayra Paibis who took part at the rally demanded unconditional release of the trio as they are the important men of the Pambay-led UNLF who signed a cease-fire agreement with the government of India. They asked the government of India what is the meaning of peace talk. We, the mothers, blame the nation, the nature of the union government. <laughs> Word segi wahan tok to ikai khom nabo bu kulak taba. India government nama di Manipur government nata uri bu thong si. Yang confusing confusing oi ba cemam nabo koi dek gian ta taba. Peace tok i wahan tok se. Pagi oi nata han gi ba masih bu nungai taba nungang bu phong tok bu kalu ina lui nena pagi bu mui oi hum do. Condition yau tu nuk kujak ta tha tok piu hai nena ngasih koi i khong jang jelek taba ni. Manipur Sarkar and India Sarkar are the ones who 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 are the ones. Maya Ilambi is the ones who are the ones who are the ones who are the ones. India Sarkar is the ones who are the ones who are the ones. Nungsida bawa mung de, yang nungsida bawa mung de, yang ni bawa mieng se, masih manipur sar manipur perjalanan yadi hai bodo, akui pungdong ning bawa amadi, akui ki isa isu, akui ki isa inau, maya mama akui ki mateng pangdi hai na thogla aga, makui bu santi ki wari sana raga, santi ki wari ki wahan thog do, lay tanah makui bu pasan birakanda, akui ki kongkut punjat, bagat sab mana halakanda, akui ki pangal sonda an bawa, masih ki pangal sonda halibat thabok asy, tawbi ganu manipur sarkana zukang biu, India sarkana zukang biu, amadi akui ki asyik mat thabok से सीखी से माय पाग ना बा मणिपुर सरकार ना ऐसे कोई की फुरुप से करना ना बो होना भी हो मणिपुर की अशुभ लूर बा अशुभ चीर बा तंजाजी दा ऐसे कोई की इसल इनाओ इसा इशु इबुं इपाम में आम ना ऐसे कोई की लेबाक से मांग की गदरा है ना हवाई कुबाक तो हाफ तो ना होना रिंगे मरक अच्छी दा मणिपुर को मैंने मत इंदागो मैंने 
ไอ้คุยกีลานง่ายบ่อีปุงอีปาอีซาชิงปุนามะปูมะนิปุกโกเมนะมะดิอินเดียโกเมนะงักปีชิงบีกะตระหายระกาไอ้คุยกีลานง
Congress leader Rahul Gandhi concluded his much talked about Bharat Joronya Yatra today in Mumbai by reading the preamble of the Indian Constitution. He also paid a tribute to the Dr. B. R. Ambedkar at his memorial in Taitya Bhumi in central Mumbai. Rahul Gandhi was accompanied by his sister, who is also the party general secretary Priyanka Gandhi. Vadra covers 6,600 kilometers from Manipur and gives 25 guarantees. Panch Nyai, Panchi's guarantees. Collectively, these Panch Nyais comprising Yuva Nyai, Nari Nyai, Kisan Nyai, Shramik Nyai, and Hisedari Nyai will dispel the darkness of this Anyai Kal and lay the path for a prosperous, just, and harmonious future for the people of India. Congress President Malikarjun Kharge and Congress leader Rahul Gandhi formally started the Yatra during an event in Khongjom, Thobal on January 14, 2024. The event attended by several national and regional Congress leaders saw Rahul Gandhi inaugurate the Yatra while criticizing the BJP government over the current situation in the state. Rahul Gandhi addressing a massive gathering of over 50,000 individuals in Thobal district expressed the Congress party's understanding of the pain and suffering endured by the people of Manipur. Rahul Gandhi criticized Prime Minister Narendra Modi for not visiting Manipur to offer solace to those affected by the prolonged clash that has lasted for nine months. Gandhi pledged that the party would work to restore the lost trust and faith caused by the persistent violence, emphasizing their commitment to bringing relief and unity to the region. Manipur has been in the grip of ethnic violence since May 3, 2023, in which over 170 people have lost their lives and tens of thousands have been displaced from their homes. Rahul Gandhi, who started the Yatra by first paying tributes at the Kongjom War Memorial in Thobal. Four coaches and the engine of the Sabarmati Agra Kant Express de derailed near Madar Railway in Ajmer, Rajasthan during the early hours of Monday. There have been no reported fatalities, but several passengers have incurred injuries. Rescue operations are on ongoing with Railway Protection Force, Government Railway Police, Additional Divisional Railway Manager and other high-ranking officials present at the scene, working to restore the derailed co coaches and engines. Passengers report the incident occurred around 1 a.m. Northwestern Railway CPRO Shashi Kiran confirmed the derailment, stating vehicle number 12548 traveling from Sabarmati to Agra derailed near the home signal in Ajmer's Madar today. Four general coaches and the engine of the train derailed. The chief police, the chief public relations officer the CPRO confirmed that no lives were lost in a recent train accident. Railway officials promptly arrived at the accident site, ensuring those with minor injuries were transported to nearby hospitals. Despite the incident, many passengers were aboard the train. In response, railway authorities have established a support desk at Ajmer station and shared a helpline number. 0145 to assist those affected. People in Rimbi and Tingling are fighting a big problem regarding forest fires. These fires started on Saturday night and are spreading fast. Even though villages, firefighters and forest officers are working hard but stop the, stopping the fire is really tough. Reports from the ground reveal the severity of the situation. Locals of Rimbi express deep concern at the, as the firing dangerously encroaches upon residential areas posing a grave threat to the numerous households. The flames, fueled by dry vegetation and fanned by strong winds, have intensified the peril leaving communities on edge. People are doing their best to stop the fire but it's tough. They are working together to keep everyone safe and protect homes. Officials are keeping a close eye on the situation. They are trying to figure out how to deal with the fire and keep people safe. The Assam Rifles and Border Security Force have scored a significant victory in the ongoing battle against narcotics trafficking in Tripura. In two separate operations, contraband items valued at a staggering rupees 2 crores were seized. 
highlighting the continued efforts to curb illegal activities in the region. The first operation, led by the Assam Rifles in collaboration with the Customs Department, resulted in the interception of a substantial quantity of marijuana. Acting on credible intelligence, a joint team conducted an operation in the general area of Jirania, West Tripura district. The outcome was a seizure of 240 kilograms of marijuana with an estimated street value of rupees 1.08 crores. The seized contraband was handed over to the Customs Department for further investigation and legal proceedings. In a separate development, the Border Security Forces, in conjunction with the Railway Protection Force, intercepted suspected brown sugar at the Kamaraghat Railway in Unakoti District. The contraband weighing 290.50 grams and valued at rupees 1.45 crores was discovered concealed within soap cases aboard the Silcher Agartala Express. The perpetrators had ingeniously disguised the illicit substance within six soap cases camouflaged as gift packets in an apparent bid to evade security scrutiny. However, security forces managed to seize the packets, although no suspects were apprehended at the scenes. In Aizol Stuikal South neighborhood, a lifeless body of 52-year-old V. Lalming Tangi, wife of C. Zotan Mawa, was discovered at her shop in Capital's New Market. The incident occurred on Sunday morning at around 10 a.m. Home Minister K. Sabdanga expressed addressed the press revealing details surrounding the incident. Lalming Tangi, known as the pro proprietor of VLH Variety store failed to return home the previous night prompting concern from her husband. Police and forensic teams rushed to the scene to initiate a thorough investigation. Suspicions soon centered on 34-year-old Irene Lazom, La, Lalom Zali, wife of La, Lalong Mona, a resident of Ramthar North locality. Lalam Zwali was apprehended in Aizos Zema Bagdintar locality where police recovered incriminating evidence including a knife believed to be the murder weapon. During police interrogation, Lalam Zwali reportedly confessed to the crime. A case has been registered at Aizos police station. A Bangladeshi smuggler was killed while another managed to flee with bullet injuries after they launched an attack on the border security forces while thwarting a smuggling bid on Sunday in Magroli village under the Unakoti district. BSF sources told India Today Northeast that when the BSF troops were performing duty ahead of the fence in the BOP Magroli, they observed 15 to 20 miscreants approaching the international border from the Indian side with headloads and 25 to 30 miscreants from the Bangladesh side with a bamboo ladder. BSF troops challenged them to stop, but they didn't pay heed, became aggressive and encircled the BSF Jawan on duty, sensing imminent danger to life and government property, the BSF Jawan fired one PAG round which hit one of the smugglers and he was further apprehended. Upon this, about 10 to 15 miscreants got aggressive and assaulted the BSF Jawan, tried to snatch his weapon and attempted to take him to Bangladesh territory. In response, the BSF Jawan again fired which compelled the Bangladeshi smugglers to flee towards Bangladesh territory said a BSF official who wished to remain anonymous. In this incident, one BSF Jawan sustained grievous injuries on his forehead and was evacuated to the nearby district hospital where he pre received preliminary, pre preliminary treatment. The condition of the Jawan is now stable. In this incident, one Bangladeshi national, namely Saddam Hussein, aged approximately 23 years of the village Dastaki district, Molovi Bazar, who was hit by a pack round, was also evacuated to the district hospital where doctors declared him broad debt. It is also learned that one miscreant also sustained injuries in the firing and was taken to Bangladeshi territory by Bangladeshi miscreants, said the official. Now we'll be taking a short break. We'll be right back. 
planning to study outside Manipur? Are you confused about your college or university selection? After 12, Manipur Edu Online provides assistance to help you. College or university selection, admission guidance, career counseling. Don't delay. For more details, kindly log into our website www.manipuridu.online or you can also call us at 7628960947. Success for your children. Get enrolled to one of the finest schools in Northeast India, UNECO School. Excellence in education. Gear up for the future with Quantum University. Write your success story with our new age programs that shall be amongst the top three most rewarding careers in India and across the globe in the next decade. One of the reasons why Quantum is a leading private university in India is these world-class partnerships which makes it stand out among the rest. Presto personalized wonders in Falda Nauna Hangdok Chari, Heidi Basida, personalized gifts, corporate gifts, awards and mementos, home decor, office rubber stamp na chingba potlam sing, mapama si da pangbigani, na si maglang sing birao, tila grass enterprises, Presto, Tangal Bazaar near Kasturi Tong in Fal. Contact number 0385244 Natraga 9862100456. Welcome back. Now moving on to further news. Rotary Club of Polo City in Fall has extended relief materials to Lamaram SC Girls Hostel Relief Camp yesterday. The relief materials distributed by the Rotary Club of Polo City in Fall include 25 bright plastic buckets of 100 lit liters each, two gas stuffs, books, toys and snacks for children. There are 25 families from Churachampur taking shelter at this relief camp since May last year. As expressed by the inmates, the urgent requirements for them is to have an engagement with jobs for self-earning to grow themselves and more particularly for growing children. The president of the club has discussed about the present needs, difficulties, sorrows and griefs of the inmates of relief camp. The president of the club has assured them to donate loom, fissa coal and other possible helps. Club has also been expressed to organize a health checkup program, especially from BP thyroid, for BP thyroid and I patients shortly. The members of the club have also shared the love and solidarity with the fellow inmates of the relief camp. On the occasion, President Rotarian Gopal Khetri Mayum's secretary, Dr. Chingtam Deepak, and other senior members of Rotary Club of Polo City Imphal were present.
The premiere show of the Bonsai, a new production of the Kangjing Repertory Theatre, was held yesterday at GM, GN Manipur Dance Academy. It was produced by the Kangjing Repertory Theatre under the aegis of Ministry of Culture Government of India. The play is directed by Prasanta Moyangthim, director of the Kangjing Repertory Theatre. Speaking on the occasion, Prasanta Moyangthim said that there are many people who cannot live freely like the bonsais. There are many people who are being tortured in the society. They are unable to have justice in the society. There are also many people who were suppressed. The play is based on the grievances faced by the suppressed people, he added. Yesterday, on the second day of the competition of 15th Mr. India 2024, Senior Men's and Women's Bodybuilding National Championship held at Ludhiana, Punjab from 16 to 17 March. Till now, Manipur team got one gold medal, one silver medal, one bronze medal. Altogether, 390 athletes from 32 units from all over India, including railways, services, revenue, board, etc., were competing in different categories. The Manipur team is led by S.H. Sanathoi Singh as team manager and R.K. Mani Sana Singh as coach and Ratan Singh, President AMBBA. Organizing Secretary IBBF is the overall charge, uh, overall in charge of the team Manipur. Ingudam Kavita Channu, 55 plus kilograms, women's body building friends fitness gym, gym Tera got gold medal, whereas Neta Singh Laisham, 60 kilograms, Men's Body Building United Gym Naram Thong got silver medal. Assam Minister Pijush Hazarika launched a scathing attack on the Congress stating that the party has turned a zero with no ideology of its own. Pijush Hazarika who was speaking at the mass joining program in Jorhat where former Congress leader Rana Goswami too joined the BJP on March 17th. More than 2,000 Congress workers led by Rana Goswami joined the Saffron Party in the presence of state BJP President Bhavesh Kalita and Minister Pijush Khazarika. You have proved today itself by quitting Congress and joining BJP. Several leaders including Bhavesh Kalita, Tapan Gogoi, Hemanta Kalita, Santanu, Santanu Pujari, Kamakya and many others are part of the BJP for a very long time. What does this prove? It proves that BJP pays attention not only towards the newly inducted but even the senior leaders. And this way this party works together for the entire state as well as the entire country, said Hazarika. The minister speaking on the upcoming election added, this election is not a big thing for us. For BJP, these elections hold not much importance. Serving the motherland is the prime duty of our party. You all must be keeping an eye on national media outlets where through their opinion polls have been reporting of more than 400 plus seat win in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. According to Hazarika, the Congress lacks, lacks a clear ideology and leadership leading to internal conflicts. He further stated that the Congress has allied with the BJP to overcome these issues. Hazarika concluded by suggesting that the Congress presently holds no significant political influence.
The Assam Pradesh Congress Committee has penned, penned a letter to the Chief Election Commissioner accusing the Assam government of violating the Model Code of Conduct. APCC Chief Bora alleges that government advertisements, including images of the Prime Minister and Chief Minister, remain in place despite the enforcement of the Model Code of Conduct. In the letter, Bora requests the CEC to take immediate action against this perpetrated violation. In anticipation of the forthcoming general election of Lok Sabha and State Legislative Assembly scheduled to commence from March 20, 2024, the District Magistrate of Itanagar, Shweta Nagorti IAS, has issued a crucial order to ensure a smooth and secure electoral process within the Itanagar capital region under the provisions of Sector Section 17.3b of the Arms Act 1959 and the Arms Rules. 1962, coupled with the Indian Armed Act, 1878, District Magistrate Nagar, Nagar Koti has mandated the, the, the position of all licensed firearms within the Itanagar capital region to the nearest police stations. This directive is aimed at curbing potential threats to public safety and order during the election period. The order specifically targets individuals associated with criminal activities, violence, rioting, or those released on bail, who may pose risk of firearm misuse or involvement in law and order disturbances. It states the importance of preventive measures to safeguard against any potential threats to the integrity of the electoral process. Institutional license holders such as banks have been granted the opportunity to seek exemptions from this order by submitting reasoned applications to the relevant police stations accompanied by appropriate documentation. According to the directive, all licensed fire firearms must be deposited immediately unless exempted and will remain in police custody until one week after the completion of the election counting process slated to conclude on June 6, 2024. The respective officer in charge of the police station has been tasked with overseeing the secure storage of the firearms and ensuring the return to the licenses post-election. A terrifying incident unfolded in Manas National Park, Assam, when a giant rhino charged a tourist vehicle, putting the lives of the passengers at risk. The incident which took place on the Matanguri Banbari Road with the, within the Banbari range of the park highlights the importance of responsible wildlife tourism and the ever-present power of nature. The incident occurred while a group of tourists from the Bongaigal oil refinery were enjoying a jeep safari in Manas National Park. Unforeseen, a rhinosaurus known for its immense size and unpredictable temperament suddenly charged towards their vehicle, the rhino stuck to struck the jeep at high speed, causing a jolt and undoubtedly a moment of sheer panic for the tourists. The presence of mind and swift action of the driver avertedly averted a potential tra tragedy. The driver, in a split-second decision, managed to maneuver the vehicle away from the charging rhino, ensuring the safety of the tourists on board. A, dep a deputy superintendent of police with the Assam police has been apprehended on charges of sexually abusing a minor domestic help. The Assam Director General of Police, G.P. Singh, took to microblogging site X to address the alarming alle allegations, confirming the registration of case number 42 under sections 376 and 506 of the Indian Penal Code along with Section 6 of the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences POCSO, Act at Dergao Police Station in District Golaghat, the DGP stated the gravity of the situation. The accused, DSP Kiran Nath, currently stationed at Lachit Barpukhan Police Academy, was arrested following the emergence of compelling evidence during the course of investigation. Zero tolerance towards sexual misconduct amongst police personnel remains cornerstones of the policy of Assam Police Headquarters, asserted DGP GP Singh, reiterating the, re reiterating the commitment of the department to uphold the highest standards of integrity and accountability. The 5th Kalaktang constituency in Arunachal has been marred by violence and unrest following the announcement of the BJP ticket to, to the cousin brother of the chief minister. 
The, the decision has sparked outrage among supporters of sitting MLA Dorji Wang de Karma, leading to a series of disturbing incidents in the region. The situation escalated to the extent that the superintendent of police of West Kameng district was injured, with reports of stones being pelted at law enforcement officials and members of the present MLA candidate, BJP's Sesam Chombe. In recent weeks, tensions have been escalating as report supporters of MLA Dorji Wang Di Karma express their dissatisfaction over the denial of the party ticket to their leader. The situation reached a boiling point after the official declaration of the BJP's candidate with multiple incidents of vandalism and attacks reported in the area. According to sources, some supporters of the present MLA have been accused of inciting and misleading the youth, resulting in outbreaks of violence and unrest. The violence has targeted not only public and government property, but also the homes of innocent residents, including those with children. Reports have emerged of external elements being brought in to exacerbate the situation, with accusations of goons being mobilized from outside the constituency. In light of the upcoming Lok Sabha elections on 19th April, the District Magistrate of East Garo Hills has issued a directive under Section 144 of the CRPC and Section 17 3 close A and close B of the Arms Act 1959. The notice calls for all harm arms holders in the district to submit their licenses and arms to the Executive Magistrate, Superintendent of Police, the nearest police stations or the OGC within a span of seven days. The notification further warns that the failure to deposit both the license and arms within a given time frame will result in prosecution under Section 25 1BH of the CRPC. Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal will not appear before the Enforcement Directorate on March 18 after he was summoned over Jal Board money laundering probe. When there is bail from the court, why is ED sending summons again and again? ED summons are illegal, ANI cited a statement from the Aam Admi Party. The party said that the centre is using ED to target Kejriwal. ED has issued summons to Kejriwal, who is the Aam Admi Party national convener. Under Prevention of Money Laundering Act Section 50 over alleged irregularities in the Delhi Jal Board. This is the second case lodged against Kejriwal under the Anti Money Laundering Law. He was earlier issued summons for questioning in the Delhi Excise Police Policy case. The Delhi Chief Minister has kept eight summons in the case so far. A ninth summon in the Liquor Policy case has asked him to appear before ED for questioning on March 21st. Russian President Vladimir Putin secured a resounding victory in the country's election on Sunday, solidifying his grip on power in a record post-Soviet landslide. The outcome which saw Putin garnering 87.8% of the vote according to an exit poll by the Public Opinion Foundation cements his already tight control over Russia. Putin, a former KGB lieutenant colonel who has led the country since 1999, emphasized the significance of the win as a message to the West, asserting Moscow's right to stand up to external pressure, particularly in light of its actions in Ukraine. The election marks a new six-year term for Putin, potentially marking him Russia's longest-serving leader in over 200 years if he completes it. Despite accusations of electoral irregularities from Western nations, including the United States, Germany and the United Kingdom, Putin dismissed criticisms and portrayed the election as democratic. However, opponents argued that the imprisonment of political adversaries and censorship undermined the fairness of the process. Communist candidate Nikolai Karitanov emerged as the closest contender to, the, to Putin, securing just under 4% of the vote followed by newcomer Vladislav Davankov and ultra-nationalist Leonid Slutsky. In his victory speech in Moscow, Putin pledged to prioritize revolving issues related to Russia's military involvement in Ukraine and reiterated his commitment to strengthening the country's armed forces. He also addressed the recent death of opposition leader Alexei Navalny describing it as a sad event and confirming readiness for a prisoner swap involving Navalny. 
Inspired by Navalny, thousands of opponents protested against Putin at polling stations both inside Russia and abroad. However, Putin asserted that these protests had no impact on the election's outcome. The election took place amidst ongoing tensions with Ukraine, with Putin framing the conflict as a historic battle against Western encroachment. Despite international criticism, Putin's re-election was never in doubt given his control over Russia and the absence of genuine challenges. Turnout nation nationwide was reported at 74.22%, surpassing levels from the previous election in 2018. However, there was no independent tally of participation in opposition demonstrations. Navalny's death has left the opposition without its most prominent leader for the consolidating consolidating Putin's do dominance. The West continues to view Putin as an autocrat, with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky denouncing the election as illegitimate. The election comes at a critical juncture for the Ukraine war and broader geopolitical geopolit dynamics, with support for the Ukraine entangled in U.S. domestic politics ahead of the no November presidential election. Despite Kyiv's efforts, Russian forces have made gains following a failed Ukrainian counteroffensive last year. Upon improvement in the law and order situation in the Valley District's curfew has been relaxed till 10 p.m. today in Imphal East, Imphal West, and Tobal Districts. In Gokcheng District, curfew has been relaxed till 8 p.m. today. However, in Bishnupur District, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. Traffic is seen as usual on the roads. Most of the shops and markets remained open. People were seen purchasing essential items during the curfew relaxation. For the TV News Channel, contact to the email address info at elitv.in or 9402890982 and subscribe to Elite TV YouTube channel or follow on Facebook page, Instagram and X for more information about the channel. Last but not least, let's look at the headlines once again. Unidentified people hurled grenade at the residence of Fox President at Kongba last night. No one has been injured. Protests intensify over arrest of three UNLFP cadres. Torch rally taken out in Imphal. Miscreants ransack ITLF office in Churachampur district, destroys documents and computers. Putin wins Russia election in landslide victory. And curfew lasts in Imphal East, West and Thobal districts till 10 p.m. For Kokting district till 8 p.m. In Bishnupur district, curfew has been relaxed till 5 p.m. today. Well, this is all for now. Thank you for watching. There will be more updates at 3 p.m. LATV English News. Till then, keep watching, stay tuned, and stay safe.